Hi guys, welcome to a new episode of Kimmy 10 in 1977. And I want to start straight off with Paulinho da Costa Agora. And I think most people have a record with Paulinho da Costa on it because he is a session player who does most of the percussions on so many albums. It's wonderful. 1977 was his debut year and here you can hear him play with all his toys, everything he has. And just look at his smile. If you hear this album, it will make you smile. It's a very nice start of 1977. And many people have already shown a lot of albums. Fred, you showed some. Tim, I saw your video. Dave, I saw your video. John. And I was surprised when I picked my 10 records. I had no doubles, well, except one. Tim, you had one album you showed, I want to show also. But for the other ones, I'm missing punk in my collection, I'm missing reggae in my collection, so I had an easy time. Next album I want to show, I have shown before. It's also from an, uh, uh, he's most known, I guess, for session player, although he did quite some solo albums. It is Mohammed. We've turned his mother out. And the first track, or the opening track on this album is crazy. Could heaven be ever be like this? But I already played this one, so I will needle drop the next song. And just look at that cover. It's so 70s, it's brilliant. I really love that cover. Because most of the albums I will show are all jazz funk. It's a jazz funk bonanza. It's crazy how many albums came out in 77 by just funk artists or session players. It looks like they got the opportunity to make their own album and they did it. And what they did was their first album, their second, and they really put everything they got into it to make it a great one. There were also artists who were coming more from the jazz side but want to experiment with funk. And a great example for this is Kelly Barge. Music is my sanctuary. He wanted to experiment with some funk and he asked the Mitchell brothers, which already I think for a lot of people you know in which direction this is going. But he does it in his own way, his own style. But of course, the Mitchell brothers, they brought in all the people they knew, did the production, did the playing on the record. So you get a much mover Kelly Birds. The title track is the song this album is most famous for, Music is My Sanctuary. But it is like Donald Bird's Places and Spaces, uh, Gears from Jenny Hammond. Really for the jazz funk, this is the one to have. It's released on Capricorn. Some have some voice on it. A typical what the Missile Bells did at that time. Although I think this is probably the last one where they cooperated with a jazz artist. And for the next album I selected let me get this one in first. It's by Julian Priester. Polarization. Um, this record is released on ECM. And I must say, you cannot call it free jazz, but I call it free jazz funk. Because it's quite loose. But there's a specific groove under it, and I would call that uh, jazz funk. And that makes for me this album very enjoyable. Because you get a little bit of that free experimentation, and on the other hand, you have the bass which keeps going underneath. And also, the same goes for this album as what I said before. He played also on a lot of other albums for other artists. First side is one long track, 
in three parts and the other side are more loose songs but they're all very nice, very enjoyable to listen to. I don't know if you can hear the bass which is still popping. I don't know who is playing the bass. Electric bass, Mark Williams. And that's a little bit the story of this Kimi 10 1977. I think everybody I will show will play in some of the other records uh, or in the other bands. Perfect example is, I guess, Sugarloaf Express, which is just, I think they only made one record and they're completely consisting out of uh, fusion uh, or just funk artists. Uh, let me per first put it on and you'll drop it. So on this album, it's recorded in Japan, I think at that time Japan was the country to go to to see these artists, a lot of them visited them and I think at some point they were all there together. So Sugarloaf Express consists of Lee Reitner, Eric Gale, Harvey Mason, Patrice Russian, Steve Foreman and Abriel, Abraham Laborel, bass player. And all the songs are typical what you could expect. There's no real one artist who takes the lead. They all get the freedom to do their part. They intertwine each other with the songs. This, well, this goes in the direction of smooth jazz, which I think later became smooth jazz. But at this record, it's very, very nice. I must say, I am um, 77. There are so many records, it's clear from what the others have shown, and that is in directions of music genres I know nothing about. But even if you're going to into the soul, you have Chic, you have Earth in the Fire, John, you mentioned them. I will not show them because most will be just funk. I only want to show one soul album because that is a very special one for me. Luther Van Ross. And Luther Vendros, uh, his voice, he's mainly known, of course, for what he did in the, um, in the 80s. Um, but he started, I think, the year before, 76, his first album. And in 77, he released this one. And this is, it's just a blueprint of what is coming. He already exactly knew how he wanted to sound, how he wanted to project his image. The only strange thing is, this is never released on CD, because Luther Vendros, he did not want it to have released on CD. And I don't know really what the reason is, because this album is crazy good, crazy good. And next is one of my favorite bands. I've not shown them that much in the series of Kimmy 10 um, because I could have shown them in any album or any album from them in any year because I think I have the almost complete collection of from them. Crusaders, but for me, this is the album where it all started. This is the album I got to learn the Crusaders, and it is also the album uh, that got me into jazz funk or funk, or I must say, in jazz actually. This is so, I have spun this so many times in my, when I was still at school in my room, it's crazy. I think I have two or three copies, one is sealed, I keep it sealed just, just for fun actually, because they're not that expensive, you can see at the price, you can pick this up quite cheaply. But it's very good, it's really typical the Crusaders, just playing with a nice groove under it. Love this song, I love the album. Only sad part is Wayne Henderson left. He went out to do production work for other groups and I don't think he had the time to also be in the Crusaders and do the touring. But partly that was also 
uh, it's a good thing because he produced some bands which made, I guess, their best albums together with him. Pleasure. Pleasure with Joyous. Uh, they are a from group. Uh, I think they wanted to experiment or put in a little bit more of a jazzy vibe to their songs. And they hired Wayne Henderson to do the production. And he just put in uh, his touch. And that makes this album, well, it says joyous, but it makes it also really a joy album. Because we have the fun, but it gets that little bit of looseness, a little bit of a jazzy fight. There's also some great jazz fun numbers on this one. But it really takes the edge of the hard funk uh, they did before. It's released on Fantasy. I really enjoyed this album. And we are already at uh, 8, so two more to go. This is a uh, very nice album, not easy to get. Uh, Takira Blue, this is the reissue. And Takira Blue, they started in uh, the year before, I guess, that was the debut album. This is the second album. Tom, you showed their um, first album. I'm more um, preferring the second album. That's more, much more jazz funk, um, much more of a groovy side to it. It's the same players, and I must say it's quite fun because when I looked at the back uh, to see who was playing on it, um, one of the artists is. Um, Kawasaki and Tim, you showed that before. I did not know who he was. He plays guitar and is certainly somebody I should try to invest a little bit more um, because he's playing very well. Although on this album, there are two guitars or two people playing the guitar that's um, Rai Kawasaki and James Mason. And James Mason is, of course, also he made or released in '77 another brilliant. Jazz Funk album. That's the last album I want to show. James Mason, Rhythm of Life. Another great, great album. Um, we'll need to drop three. It's a little bit, well, it is almost like Takira Blue. Um, although not the same players play on it, but also the... Um, I don't remember his name, who started Takeda Blue, does the production on this album. Um, Jace Mason was at that time a very hot uh, session player. He had just released together, or he, but he played in the Roy Ayers band. Roy Ayers released Lifeline in 77. Could not include it, I wanted to, but you have to choose 10. And that made 1977 really maybe the best year for jazz punk. It is just a bonanza of classic or masterpieces of albums which really got that really 70s, late 70s groove to it. It's also a little bit sad because I think this is almost also the last year that there were a lot of jazz punk albums released. Uh, punk really took over, disco had to be killed. So, one of the first artists uh, who had to suffer from this were the artists who did Jazz Funk. Jazz Funk really, after 77, closed down. So, not the sure what I will show next time. I have to think of something. Um, thank you for watching. See you next time. <laughs>